Hi, hello. Welcome to um, my home and this is my dog Pi. He's a three-year-old Border Collie. What I'd like to show you today is some, a very foundational training technique that's absolutely vital if you wish to progress in any way with your dog's training. An exercise that's worth doing whether you've got a, an eight-week-old puppy or an eight-year-old dog. Because if you can't do what I'm about to show you, then there's every chance you've got other problems in um, training areas uh, of your dog's life. And what we're going to look at today is how to touch the dog. How to touch the dog to change the dog's mood. How to touch the dog to enable you to groom with ease, groom the dog, to um, be able to go to the vet and for the dog to allow the vet to touch them all over. And so we're going to practice this by learning how, how to touch. Now firstly, when I'm stroking on this occasion, I'm pressing firmly enough to sort of, sort of make contact with Pi's skin, but not so lightly that I'm just tickling the hair on the surface. So we want that touch that actually makes contact with the dog and isn't going to tickle them. And for Pi, who's a very tactile dog, um, he really enjoys this sort of top of his head stroking, but for some dogs who are maybe a little more shy, they might prefer this under the chin stroking, and it's always good to start in the place the dog enjoys most. So just notice your dog's reaction. I'm almost having to hold Pi's head up to stroke him under the chin, whereas he really just relaxes. It's comfortable for both of us for me to stroke him on the top of his head. Now once the dog is happy with you quietly and slowly stroking that area, the movement will set the mood for you both. It will make the dog and yourself calm. And once you're both in that sort of calm place, start to lengthen the stroke. So it starts to travel down the dog's spine all the way to the base of their tail. And as the hand does that, it's actually traveling over all the nerve endings in the dog's body. And so it produces this very calm state. I think this is the sort of method magicians use for, for teaching, getting rabbits to stay quiet in their hats. But on this occasion, we don't want them in a hat, we're just gonna, we just want them quiet. And as the dog gets calmer and calmer, and I can feel Pi's pulse getting lower and lower, and he's really getting quite dopey, he's now ready for me to start moving that touch out. So first off, I move out and down his sides. He's not making this easy by lying down, he's so relaxed. By making sure I can open his ears and just hold them back and you'll be pleased to know they're nice and clean today. And maybe even quietly lift a lip and check out his teeth. Looks like he could do with a little toothbrush. And then down his legs and to both his feet at the front and down his back legs and his feet at the back. And once he's happy with all of that I go back and actually touch his toes. So we're making sure that there's no no-go areas on your dog for you, which is really important for all the reasons we've already mentioned. But also, of course, as we're doing this, we're increasing the bond and the understanding between us and the dog. And then I want to show you how a different touch can produce a different effect. So maybe pile sit up so you can see him a little better in the camera. Pi, can you get up? Pi, Pi. Good boy. Just need a little minute to think then. He's a bit sleepy. And I'll start moving my hands much more quickly, tickling him a little bit with my fingertips and just noticing <laughs> if we can wake him up. He's, although he's still sitting down, his tail's going at 90 to the dozen now. So this fast movement gets him excited. Now, what I have made sure I do, which I forgot to tell you, is that he is on a lead. So he can't actually leave me while I'm doing any of this. And I've just got that lead, it's a nice soft one and it's plenty long enough. And I've just got that under my leg 
to keep him near me and make sure he doesn't wander off. And as you can see, Pi's now got up and the excitement level if we start patting and we can make him sillier and sillier. Good boy, <laughs> yes. And by the same token, we can change the stroke back to the longer slow one and just quietly <laughs> bring it back down again. Good boy. Yeah, I love you too. Yeah, good boy. And so I'm not telling him off because I just wound him up. <laughs> and I'm just going to quietly and persistently ask him with my hands to come back down again. And there he goes. Now, if you could practice doing this with your dog, and I'd advise that you don't go for the excited version until you've got the calm one really sussed. Pi's still a little bit excited. We've practiced this once or twice now, so he knows the game. But again, I just keep quietly stroking him and bring him back down. He's a very licky, licky dog. He does like to kiss. And so, as I said before, if you've got any, I think this is a great exercise. It's fun for both the dog and the handler, whether you've got problems or not. But if you've got problems, it's obviously far more important for you to carry on with this. So thank you very much for your time today, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And over the coming weeks, I hope to repeat exercises like this and other ones, not just with Pi, but with other people's dogs. So you can see how I cope when it maybe goes a little bit wrong. But thank you for today and goodbye.